What do you weigh? What's your 5K PB? What can you bend? What's your FTP? What's your sleep score? P. What's your resting heart rate? What's your BMI? What's your fasting glucose? What's your CSS? What's your pin? Okay, what's your muscle mass? And what's your body fat percentage? What do you mean you don't know? Oh, you do know you have body fat scales at home. I see. And how accurate are those home scales for body composition? Not at all, I'm afraid. Home scales aren't overly accurate, but they are consistent. So great for tracking losses and gains, but losses and gains of what exactly? Water, fat, muscle. Whilst we athletes tend to know a lot of our numbers very accurately, when it comes to what our body is made up of, other than weight or correctly mass, there's actually only one true way of knowing what it is we're made up of. The DEXA scan, the catchly named dual energy x-ray absorbometry, absorb, absorbometry, ab absorb, dual x, dual x-ray absorbometry, which tells us our true mass, lean mass, bone mass and density, and probably the most vital in my situation, fat mass, along with visceral fat, it tells you whether you're a good person, whether your kids love you, whether you're going to heaven or hell. I've always struggled with healthy and consistent weight, but in the last year, mainly thanks to quitting drinking, I've lost a decent amount of weight. I was 107 kilos in January 2023 and dropped to between 90 and 95 kilos throughout 2023. And so in November last year, around my 47th birthday, I took myself off to Yeovil Hospital for a DEXA scan. It's a private procedure procedure costing around £120 for a single scan but was carried out in the NHS x-ray department. Just a slight aside here, sitting here in the NHS waiting room among some quite poorly people brought home Peter Atiyah's argument about medicine 3.0, using medicine to avoid issues rather than to treat them. I was there through choice to stop me having to be there through necessity and the privilege of not just access to knowledge but being able to afford to do this wasn't and isn't lost on me. It being an NHS wing means I have no video of it to show you here. The thing is, there isn't actually much to show you anyway. Unlike other testing that I've done, there is one thing and one thing alone that sets this apart. It doesn't hurt. Let me just repeat that. It doesn't hurt. You lie very, very still for about seven and a half minutes and that's it. No pain. It was an oddly tricky thing to do. So what did I learn from it and what could you learn from it and what am I going to do about it? Let's take a deep and fairly long dive into this, but I assure you what I learned from this scan has probably changed my life forever. You receive an absolute ton of data. It scans each part of your body, left arm, right arm, trunk, right leg, left leg, and your head. And it gives you a full breakdown of numbers plus totals and imagery. Three pages of data to pour over, utter bliss. The main focus is bone density, muscle mass, and fat mass. So let's go through all of these in order. Let's begin with something interesting. When I went in, Chris, the operator, weighed me on his NHS scales. Super accurate, right? Well, this measured me at 94.7 kilos. The DEXA scan, which is my true mass, came in at 93 kilos, 435.1 grams. A pretty specific set of numbers and 1.3 kilos different to the NHS scales. An interesting start. My right arm is just over 100 grams heavier than my left, but madly, my right leg is 1.1 kilos heavier than my left. Crazy. My head weighs just over five kilos. Five kilos. I mean, if that isn't information worth 120 pounds alone, then I don't know what is. Okay, that's my mass. Pretty much what we can get from our bathroom scales, but with a degree of accuracy and some interesting metrics on right side versus left side. On to straight into the numbers. BMC is bone mineral content. My right side is marginally denser than my left, but not too much. Being right-handed and footed means that I tend to use that side more than the left. Usage or torsion and impact on bones increases their strength. Most people's weaker sides are exactly that, and Chris believes that my more balanced bone density is due not only to my exercise, but perhaps more historically my 30-year career as a drummer. Seems all those backbeats with my left arm have paid off. <laughs> Here's something a bit mad. 
This bit of me, my skeleton, stop laughing at the back, weighs exactly three kilos, 285.34 grams. And on the BMC scale for my age, well, I'm doing well. Dark blue is the average range, light blue is the above average, and I'm well above that. Not only does Chris put this down to my exercise and career as a drummer, but also my vitamin D supplements that I take. Optimum vitamin D levels are necessary to increase the efficiency of calcium absorption. Without adequate vitamin D, the body absorbs no more than 10 to 15% of dietary calcium. In the vitamin D sufficient state, the intestinal calcium absorption increases to 30 to 40%. We need vitamin D to absorb calcium that makes our bones strong. All in all, a very good start. The chassis is solid and well above average. I don't have to do anything other than just keep doing what I'm doing in this regard as I get older. Okay, up next. Okay, a little clarity here for this one. Lean mass for the arms and legs is muscle mass. In the torso, it's muscle and organ mass. Unsurprisingly, my left side is weaker. 257.6 grams more muscle in my right arm compared to my left. The average is a two to 300 range, so I fall perfectly in the middle of the average level there. I have an astonishing 849.4 grams more muscle in my right leg than in my left, and that's pretty crazy. But it seems that our weaker legs can have around 10% less muscle than our strong limb, and that would be around about 1,076 grams. So I'm a little under average in terms of the difference there. The amount of lean muscle I have is okay. It's decent. Chris says that bodybuilders are mainly interested in this metric so that they can have a DEXA scan to be as even on left and right as possible. Going forwards, for me, there are two main things to take from this. One, I'd like to even out my left side closer to my right, and two, Given that as you get older, it becomes harder to put on muscle mass and then you begin to lose it, my main current mission is to put on as much lean mass as I can while I can so that my starting point is higher and when it comes to the inevitable dip, it means I'll be stronger at an older age, be more mobile, less prone to accidents and falls. And essentially, this is one of the key things we should all be doing. So I want these numbers to go up in February when I come back. So next is... Thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe. What do you mean you want to know the body fat percentage? Really? I mean, come on, be honest. I've told you my lean and skeletal mass. You just have to subtract that from my total mass to get that. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, okay. Bone density is great. Muscle mass is great. Body fat percentage. It's what I thought. Horrendous. Right, fat mass is interesting. A total of 30 kilos and 94.9 grams, a lot, and a similar discrepancy between left and right side, due mainly to the muscle mass. To the far right of the chart is my body fat percentage. And again, the total is probably the most interesting, a whopping 32.2% body fat. Lean, I am not. Here you can see, right, look, stop laughing. Here you can see my body makeup. Blue's a bone. Ready pink's a lean mass and orange to yellow is fat. Great, isn't it? Do you remember this? Central heating for kids. So here we have where I sit on the averages for my age. And for once, I don't want to be above average. I don't want to be in the light blue. I want to be at the bottom of the dark blue. The BMI scale, flawed as it is, highlights this too. And a long story short, I need to get leaner. If I stay at the same lean muscle composition as I am now, I would need to lose 6.7 kilos of fat just to get to 25% body fat, just in the green zone for BMI. Do you want to know something really interesting? My fat max heart rate from Bath University lab testing on the bike is 121 BPM or 175 watts of power. At that heart rate or power, I burn around 0.99 grams of fat a minute. So let's call that one gram. In order to lose 6.7 kilos of fat just to get to 25% body fat, I'd need to ride my bike at 174 watts or 121 BPM for 112 hours. Got that? Kind of puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Well, actually, it doesn't because that's not the whole story. The whole story is hidden. You can pretty much see that fact, but the real issue is this. 
I'm going to read this verbatim. Somewhat connected to the pattern of fat distribution, but a critical statistic on its own, is the quantity of visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat that sits on the inside of the abdominal cavity and around the organs. You cannot necessarily touch it, but if you grab fat around your belly fat, then it is not visceral fat. DXA or DEXA is the only technology that can measure this important metric. Visceral fat is considered especially dangerous. Even small amounts is highly correlated with heart disease and a host of other metabolic and cardiovascular risk factors. It's measured in three ways, in weight, in volume, and in surface area. Most studies have been based on surface area, and this is the figure we concentrate on. If it's greater than 100 centimeters squared, you may have an increased risk of metabolic or cardiovascular disease. Okay, visceral fat is the killer, you got that? It's connected, strongly connected, to all four of Peter Atiyah's horsemen. Cardio, cerebral vascular disease, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases, and metabolic diseases. It doesn't matter if you have strong bones and a lot of muscle mass as you get older, if you have high visceral fat, because you will be dead before you're gonna need to use it. Now we've established that, let's see where I am. So it all comes down to a single number, 171 centimeters squared. Let me read that bit from earlier again. If it's greater than 100 centimeters squared, you may have an increased risk of metabolic or cardiovascular disease. Well, mine is nearly double that. Here's the graph that shows you the full range, and I'm here. Sh this is pretty important stuff. I think I've given you enough information to know what I need to do. I have to get the fat mass of my body down. I have to do it fast and I have to do it right now. Nothing else matters really, and everything else is relatively pointless. No point in building muscle if I'm dead. No point in having strong bones if I'm dead. You get the picture? Here's the thing. You know when they say you can't out-train a bad diet? Yeah, that. And you know when you're out on a group ride and somebody at the coffee shop says about earning your cake? No, sorry, not the case. I have another scan book for February the 9th and my eyes will immediately go to that metric, that area centimetres squared. It needs to be far nearer and ideally around 100 centimetres squared in six weeks from now. That's how long I have to make a difference and it would be great to see a more balanced and stronger body too, of course but a lower body fat and a lower that area CM squared is the most critical focus. And remember that 6.7 kilos of fat I need to lose just to reach 25% body fat? Well, I can weigh myself to keep track of that on my bathroom scales. But if I'm trying to increase my lean muscle at the same time, then I need to ensure that it's fat I'm losing, not muscle. Therein lies most people's issues with weight loss. They reduce their calorie intake, which means they're restricting protein intake, which means therefore how much of that weight on your bathroom scales is fat and how much is the stuff we don't want to lose, muscle. So it will be a DEXA scan again. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it's been a long video. Peter Atiyah feels that for people in their 40s and older, DEXA scans are one of the most important things you can have done on a regular basis, and I agree 100%. Until the next video, please look after yourselves and those around you.